Hey, welcome back to the respiratory farm review section. This is lesson two, where we're gonna go over more medications. I'm Nurse Nick, I'm a pharmacology instructor at college, American Heart Association PALS and ACLS instructor, but also I'm an emergency department nurse. So uh, we're gonna go over these uh, medications and respiratory. This is the second video, and at the end of this sequence of videos, I'll go over one video that kind of gives you all the information fast and dirty of what you wanna review to help you uh, kind of memorize all the sections in a more succinct manner. So the medication we're gonna start with in this respiratory video, lesson two, is gonna be your anti tussive medication, which is gonna be codeine, okay? Codeine's kind of like, it is an opioid. So you're gonna look for those narcotic effects. Uh, codeine, you might know as lean, right? Lean is the, you know, the gangster, uh, you know, rap videos where they're, whatever. You know what lean is. So, um, codeine is gonna be given for those non-productive coughs. If they have a, you know, if they had that sticky stuff back in there, we're gonna give them guafenicin. Remember that, mucinex? So codeine is given for that dry, irritating, non-productive cough that you can't get rid of. It is usually um, given, in, you know, taken in teaspoons, uh, tablespoons, whatever the dosing is. Uh, but it's gonna have the same adverse effect of opioids. Everybody should remember all those opioids. You remember all of your body systems. CNS depression, respiratory depression, uh, GI, it can cause constipation. Anytime you have constipation, remember always tell people to uh, increase fluid fiber and exercise, but also it affects your GU. Everybody forgets about GU with uh, narcotic medications or opioids, and GU can cause urinary retention. So remember all those things. So codeine, given for coughs, this is an antitussive. Um, and of course, if you have an overdose of any kind of opioid, you're gonna give naloxone or Narcan. So the next medication is gonna be Ipratropium. So Ipratropium is also Atrovent. Atrovent combined with Albuterol is given in a Duoneb sometimes when you go in the hospital and that's what a Duoneb is. So Ipratropium is an inhaled anticholinergic. So what do you know about anticholinergic? So there's a saying that goes by and really they just dry you out. But what can that affect? So some people remember can't see, can't pee, can't spit, can't poop, okay? Can't see, can't pee, can't spit, can't poop. Go with that. All those things, if you can't see, it can cause blurred vision, it can cause issue with that. Can't pee, it's gonna decrease your urination because you're dried out. Can't see, can't pee, can't spit, it's gonna dry out your mouth. And then also can't poop, can also cause constipation. These are all anticholinergic effects. So ipratropium combined, which is atrovent, combined with albuterol can be given as a duoneb. This also treats asthma, COPD, uh, but this can cause dry mouth, hoarseness. You wanna tell the patient, make sure they increase fluid. Again, if it dries them out, suck on a hard candy, so it increases that salivation. Can't see, can't pee, can't spit, can't poop. All right. So the next medication is an antihistamine. A lot of people know this one is diphenhydramine. Remember diphenhydramine instead of Benadryl. So this is Benadryl or loratadine. It's gonna be Claritin. A lot of time antihistamines, histamines are given for release, sometimes with allergic reactions or sensitivities, all right? So we all know what Benadryl does. Typically it's gonna treat rhinitis. What is rhinitis? It's nasal congestion. Also allergic reactions um, and motion sickness, if you didn't know that, Benadryl, diphenhydramine, loratadine can, can treat motion sickness. Uh, this is gonna decrease the mucus and block histamines, and it causes sedation and anticholinergic effects. Anticholinergic effects, again, can't see, can't pee, can't spit, can't, can't poop, you got it, good. So the next medication is gonna be xanthines. So xanthines is gonna be like theophylline or aminophylline. So this medication is not generally given as a frontline drug. Usually if you go to the hospital emergency department, you come in, you're short of breath, we're gonna go ahead and give you albuterol, we're gonna give you steroids, and you should know that the primary goal of steroids is always to decrease the infl inflammation, right? That's why we give it for back pain, that's why we give it for respiratory condition, it decreases inflammation, steroids. So theophylline or aminophylline, this is gonna be a uh, treat for long-term care of COPD and asthma. It increases your camp and causes bronchodilation, but this causes risk for seizures and dysrhythmias and GI upset. So you wanna watch giving these patients stimulants that can, stimulants 
that can increase the risk for those things, right? Seizures and dysrhythmias. So the last medication is gonna be phenylephrine. This is gonna be similar to pseudofedrin, right? Pseudofedrin is pseudofed, it's a decongestant. So this also treats rhinitis, right? Everybody knows what rhinitis is, it's nasal congestion. But this might cause nervousness, agitation, some, some palpitations, rebound congestion. Everybody know what Sudafed, what do they use the Sudafed for? Like illegally, something terrible, right? So this kind of, look for the adverse effects, it kind of mimics that thing with agitation, palpitations, rebound. I, I kind of picture everything going really fast and you're really, really dried out, right? Good, that's Sudafed. Sudafedrin or phenylephrine, similar to Sudafed, is gonna dry you out, cause those anti-cholinergic effects, risk for palpitations and agitation. So that's gonna sum up these videos for respiratory. Hit like, share, or follow. We're gonna go over plenty more stuff for pharmacology and NCLEX and more. Thank you guys.